Mr. Andrew Griffith. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to make vehicle registration offences under the Vehicle Excise and Registration Act 1994 attract driving record penalty points and for connected purposes. Madam Deputy Speaker, the bill I present today aims to save lives and to relieve the stress on residents living near roads by improving the ability of the police to identify and therefore prosecute antisocial or reckless road users. I should like to be very clear that this bill is not in any way about targeting motorcyclists or indeed motorists in general. There are over one and a quarter million motorcyclists in the UK. It's a great sport and an industry, and I'm proud that Destination Triumph has a fantastic dealership for this British-owned brand in Washington, in my constituency of Arundel and South Downs. The vast majority use the roads responsibly, and West Sussex welcomes careful riders and drivers alike. But I arrived at the subject of this bill as a result of the misery inflicted upon my constituents every summer, but which reached a new intensity during lockdown. Misery that means on a day when the roads are dry, the residents of small towns and villages are woken by the sound of motorcycles, and there is no respite until sunset. In places around Wisborough Green, Petworth, Bury Hill, Codwaltham and Tillington, my constituents have to keep their windows closed however warm the day. Pedestrians feel intimidated and this issue causes a great deal of mental stress. And it's, just not, it's not just about noise. My constituents travel on statistically the most dangerous roads in the whole of Sussex. In fact, the Chichester Observer reported last month that the Road Safety Federation identified the A285 between Petworth and Chichester as one of the worst in the whole UK, with 29 serious and fatal crashes between 2013 and 2018. Nearly two-thirds of these involve motorcyclists. Similarly dangerous roads include the A272 from Tillington to Cowfold, the A283 between Fittleworth and Stenning, and the A29 from Burry Hill to Adversane. These all carry a particularly dangerous mix of vehicle types, even before the addition of a speeding motorcycle or sports car. Even the shortest journey is likely to encounter tractors and combines, a peloton of bicycles, or the local bus service. Things will improve when the long-awaited A2, A27 Arundel bypass is built and takes heavy goods vehicles away from the most dangerous A roads that I've mentioned. But this upgrade was only, meant, only announced by my friend the Secretary of State for Transport last week and will therefore take many years to arrive. And the issue is not confined to Arundel and South Downs. Members of this House who are supporting today's bill have told me of their concerns about the same issue on the A32 and A272 in the Meon Valley, or the A27 at Sherfield English in Hampshire, and in the King's North area of Ashford in Kent. Nationally, five people are killed, and a further 68 receive life-changing injuries every day on our roads. That's one terrible family tragedy every 20 minutes. It falls to the police to do their best to address these twin impacts of antisocial noise and road safety. And I'm grateful for all the efforts of my local police commissioner, Katie Bourne, and Chief Constable, Joe Shiner. This summer has seen a real effort by Sussex Police under Operation Downsway. And I've seen this firsthand when out on patrol with Chief Inspector John Carter and Police Constable Van der Weep. But despite an increase in police numbers, 380 new officers this year in Sussex and more than 4,000 nationwide, the police simply cannot be everywhere all of the time. Cameras play a vital role in extending their eyes and that's where today's bill will help. It does this by closing a loophole in the law as it stands today. Currently, while speeding offences are endorsable, that is, they result in points upon the offender's driving licence, the offence of displaying a non-compliant or even displaying no number plate at all carries only a fine. This enables antisocial drivers on our roads, especially in rural areas, to defy both speed 
and number plate recognition cameras with relative impunity. This is particularly true for owners of high performance bikes, costing tens of thousands of pounds for a £100 fine for infringing the law on public roads is far less than the cost of admission to a private and regulated track day. Madam Deputy Speaker, whilst I'm sure that honourable and right honourable members have no first-hand familiarity of the matter, when it comes to driving, points definitely don't make prizes. More points mean substantially higher insurance premiums, and multiple offences quickly make loss of a licence a real consideration. Unlike a fine, penalty points are a real sanction and are more likely to change behaviour. Indeed, I believe that the Home Office Surveillance Camera Commissioner's Working Group has made a similar plea for more robust penalties in this area. Madam Deputy Speaker, let me conclude by asking the Government and Honourable Members from across this House to join me in supporting this Bill today. No novelty or innovation is required. It marries an existing offence with an existing sanction that is a tried and tested part of the motoring statute book. It's a measure that has support from the police and residents alike. It is clear and simple and does exactly what it says on the tin. I'm therefore pleased to commend this bill to the House. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring in the bill as many as that opinion to say aye. aye. Of the contrary, no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Andrew Mitchell, Bob Blackman, Caroline Noakes, Damien Green, Damien Hines, Flick Drummond, Henry Smith, James Sunderland, Mike Penning, Sir Peter Bottomley, Tim Lawton and myself, Madam Deputy Speaker. Andrew Griffith. Vehicle Registration Offences Penalty Points Bill. Second reading what day? Friday the 27th of November. Friday the 27th of November. 